What's going on, Dodgers Nation? D-Mag here. It is a special day here at Dodgers Nation. We've got a special guest. We have Dodgers team historian, Mr. Mark Langell. Mark, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's an exciting time here. You got the All-Star Game next week. The first time at Dodger Stadium in 42 years. Only the third time that it's been in Los Angeles. Just how excited are you to have the All-Star Game back at Dodger Stadium? Well, I'm super nostalgic because when I was in middle school, they actually picked my postcard and I got to sit in the left field pavilion. I couldn't drive yet, so my mother took me to the game and National League wins 4-2. to two. But the really neat thing about it, it was the first time they ever opened up the All-Star Workout for the fans. And so on on that Monday, just imagine just showing up and being able to see them. And that wasn't something that we were expecting as fans. And so to be able to see all the pageantry and all these players, and this is before interleague play. So there's Ricky Henderson, there's Robin Yount, there's George Brett. It was just such an exciting time. And I still remember that uh, July the 7th, Walter Alston in line for the snack stand. That's the only time I ever met Walter Alston, got his autograph at the workout. So those are the things that go through my mind because having been at the stadium for 50 years, you so, we've sort of gotten used to the postseason as far as the nervousness and the rounds, but we've never had an all-star game except for that one time in 1980. And that all-star game, you had six Dodgers. You had Davey Loeb, Steve Garvey, Reggie Smith. You had Bill Russell, Jerry Royce. You had Bob Welch. This year's all-star team, you already have two Dodgers position players in Trey Turner and Mookie Betts. You got Tony Gonson. You got Clayton Kershaw. Well, one of the big hot topics right now is who should start the all-star game. And Clayton Kershaw, he's a nine-time all-star, has not started an all-star game in his career. Should have started in 2013. He was screwed by Bruce Bochu and Matt Harvey. Started, I think he should have started in 2014 when Wainwright started. But how significant, how special would it be for him to start his first Midsummer Classic at Dodger Stadium? I think it's just thrilling that we're having this conversation because just imagine six months ago, Kershaw walks off the mound. You know, a lot of people thought that's it. He's not going to be. He takes a ball with him as a souvenir. Is this the end of his career? And they're in the offseason. What happens? He gets healthy, and suddenly we're having different conversations, not can he pitch. How about in Minnesota? You should leave him in for the perfect game. What are you doing? And so if you had told me that in July we'd be going, how can he not be starting the All-Star game? That's a wonderful conversation to have. And don't forget Tony Gonsolin, 11-0, and 0, and out of nowhere. It's a wonderful story because he was an integral player a couple years ago, had some injuries, now he's back. And that's the cool thing about the All-Star game because think of all the petty things that everybody fights over. The fans shouldn't have the vote. He should start. This should start. Don't forget 2020. We were supposed to have the All-Star game at Dodger Stadium. Nothing. Can't play. You weren't going to have it in front of cardboard cutouts. Just imagine two years later if we would have the stadium filled and we would be having these arguments. Kershaw should start. What about Gonsolin? Vote for Trey. Vote for Mookie. That's the best part because we can enjoy this. Come playoffs, you get nervous. You're not thinking all the extra stuff. You just want to get to the next round. This is just like going to the carnival and watching all the stars. I agree with you 100%. Some of my friends will tell me, hey, Doug, you know, there's some more important things you could argue about. I'm like, no, it's it's who should start the All-Star game. That is front and center. I've been driving the Kershaw should start the All-Star game bandwagon for months now. But like you mentioned, Tony Gonson, 11-0, leads all of Major League Baseball with a 1-6-2 ERA. And you've got the guy that's a first ballot Hall of Famer going against the real breakthrough Greg. A guy could be his first ever All-Star game. Like I've always said, the time is meow for the great Catsby. But I would like to see... I would like to see Clayton Kershaw start that game. And if you're Brian Snitker, who would you give the ball to? Because you also have Sandy Alcantara as well, other qualified pitchers as well. I would defer to Dave Roberts because I think professionally you want to make sure, look, is he pitching on the right day? You want to, yeah. you don't want to have like Dizzy Dean 1937 when suddenly Earl Averill hits him on the foot and it affects his career as far as an injury. You want him to pitch for the right reason. You want them to start for the right reason. And the thing that I'd like to see most of all, I, you know, whether or not Kershaw starts the game, what I was thinking, if you're going to go Hollywood, you pull him with two outs in the inning. That way you get the ovation. And that's, ah. that's the important thing, because what happens if he walks off the field after the third out? Immediately, they start rolling the commercials. That's a scoreless inning for Clay. You know, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah. But just imagine if he had that elongated tip of the cap. That would be the cool moment. That's why when he had the strikeout record earlier this year, it wasn't the last out of the inning, so he could be there on the mound and take that ovation. That's what I would love to see. Give him the hook whenever he pitches with two outs so he can have that long walk off into the sunset. 
Yeah, I think that's a great idea. It almost reminds me of what we saw with Andy Pettit and Derek Jeter a few years back with Mariana Rivera. But just talk about, and I think that'd be special. Yeah, I mean, I think that you do put Clayton Kershaw on that game. It takes what's already one of the most highly anticipated All-Star games in recent history, takes it to a whole another level. It gives me chills just thinking about it. But I want to ask you about other starting pitchers in the history of the game. Koufax started in 66. Fernando Mania was underway in 81. Are there some memorable moments when it comes to starting pitchers in the All-Star game in Dodgers history? Well, I think that what you had touched on as far as Drysdale used to be yeah. the all-star all the time, so that was very important. And he was an iron horse, and he had the career strikeout record and everything like that. The great thing about Fernando, think about 1981. You have the eight straight wins. He's at the White House in June, but people kind of forget, especially the young people. There was a 50-day strike in 1981, and so when Fernando comes back and they have that game in Cleveland, that's part of healing the game. And for him later, I think in 1986, to have the five straight strikeouts and to tie Carl Hubble, that's the cool thing. The main thing, you don't want to have somebody have an injury. The fun part is when you can see a Bo Jackson just hit a bomb off of Rick Rushell at Anaheim Stadium, or you can see Dave Parker throw out Brian Downing at home plate in the 79 game. Um, Ray Fossey and Pete Rose in the 1970 game, that's really nothing, something to be celebrated because that's, a, that's one guy really had his career affected. So uh, the only thing that I would wish for is everybody have a good time, nobody gets hurt, and that's the best part, the camaraderie. Not only celebrate the sport, but celebrate the fact how, we, how far we've come in the last two years. Yeah, it's a great point. You also had Jerry Royce striking out the side there in 1980. But when you talk about this All-Star game, you just touched on it. We should have had this game a couple years ago if it weren't for COVID. The 2020 season we know was supposed to be in there for that. And you saw the renovations, the incredible renovations that they did. Back in 1980, you saw the debut of Diamond Vision. You saw they retired Duke Snyder's number four. You had It was the first time they they performed the O Canada National Anthem in history at a national event. Is there anything we could be expecting? Any first that we might be looking for for this year's All-Star Game? Well, like good showmanship, you don't want to give away all your secrets because there are a couple up the I sleeve. I see a secret in you, yeah. And that, oh, there are a lot of secrets in my head. We're and not taping this. <laughs> that's the most important thing is because you got the, the home run hitting contest, the yeah. Celebrity All-Star Game, all that stuff. Uh, the game itself, first of all, I absolutely love the uniforms. When that, when those... The gold design, that just looked very, very classy in that gold touch. So I was very excited for that. And then the thing is, it's just a celebration. That's the most important thing. You've got the Hollywood element. You've got the entertainment element. We'll see what happens. So nine innings is a lot of time to sprinkle some stuff in. I like I'm going to reframe that question a bunch of different ways so I get, and get something out of you. But, yeah, you mentioned the 1980 All-Star Game and all the excitement about that. The National League, they wins 4-2. to two. You have six Dodgers in the game. What do you mem remember most from that game? Well, it's not what I remember most about that game. It's what I remember in pregame. And I'm kind of ashamed to have to say this, but it's absolutely true. Three o'clock, I'm living in South Pasadena. As I say, I can't drive to the game. My mother gets a phone call from my Aunt Mary. Turns out my grandfather has just died on my father's side. And yeah, yeah, you're very sorry. And I wasn't that close to him. He was one of those that had a lot of grandkids. And so, you know, I'm sure he cared about us, but you know, there were a whole lot. And so they're still talking, they're still talking, and I still can remember myself. I was so anxious to go to the game. Five minutes later, they're still on the phone, and I'm like tapping my watch going, we've got to go, we've got to <laughs> go. There's nothing we can do for him. And you know, I, and, and I joke that you know, in my childhood, I had two grandfathers, but only one all-star game at Dodger Stadium. So it was very important to be there. And then just the pageantry, that's the cool thing because you grow up with it. I start to follow the team maybe around 73 and it's just like the Olympics as far as they pick your stadium and all these great players. And this is before interleague play. So all these great American league teams are going to be able to be there. You know, you got Yastrzemski and Jackson and, and players like that. That's the excitement, the pageantry as far as the game itself, 4-2, to two, it, it took care of itself. Just to see all those names, and that was the nice thing, to be able to see them having the banter in the outfield and the uniforms and the introductions and everything like that and the bunting. Um, just you knew it was a very, very special game, and you knew it was very special because, look at this, it, it took 42 years for it to occur later. Yeah, and I actually watched that game yesterday. 
And I think one of the things you mentioned is the uniforms. You like the uniforms. You like the gold. And I like the fact we watch those old games. Everyone's in their uniforms. You can see the different hats of different teams. This year, you almost get a little bit of that where it's not a completely new uniform. It's just the same word marks, but in gold. So definitely agree with that. But hey, that's great. I mean, you got to go to the game and you got to uh, got to experience that. The ticket prices have gone up in recent years when it comes to the All-Star event. I think when you look at the pride that you have in your city and your stadium showcasing this event, I mean, all throughout the years usually you have that going to teams that have built new stadiums when you get a new stadium a few years after you get the all-star game was there at any point in between now from to this year 1980 that maybe the Dodgers had a chance to host the all-star game I mean, why did it take 42 years I mean it should have been 40 years but why did it take so long well I think whoever was in the ownership change at the time it just depended if that was a priority and just think about the stadium it's ironic that you say that because tomorrow's a special day for me 50 years since my very first game. Now, as team historian, you may go, wow, that's 50 out of 60 years you've been at the ballpark. I'm 57 years old. And normally, you might be in the trapping of saying, well, back in my day, it was like this, and back in my day, and trying to say that it was so much better. Well, <laughs> there's no way I can say that because it's gotten better and better, especially the two years with that center field plaza. And now it's just like LA County Fair every single night and the statues and everything like that. That's what's so great. And so when the new owners come along in 2012, suddenly they make all these renovations and it's a way to be able to show it off to the rest of the baseball world. This isn't, yes, it's the third oldest ballpark, but when you walk around and you see the old, the new, you see the exhibits, you see all the special new high-tech things, uh, but this, still the tip of the cap to the past, it just gets better and better, and that's the exciting part. It's not just, hey, here's Dodger Stadium, and boy, wouldn't it be nice if you, you compare Dodger Stadium, uh, think of the attendance, think of the weather, think of all the amenities. There's really no comparison. Yeah, I know. It truly is blue heaven on earth. It's a baseball cathedral. I didn't even think they could improve Dodger Stadium as much as they did. To me, it's like Disneyland adding new rides. But what is your favorite addition to the recent additions that they that they put in place before the 2020 season? My favorite is just that center field plaza because yeah. having grown up in the left field pavilion, I used to look over the railing and look at the bullpen. It was kind of like an ant farm. And this little world where they, they you know warmed up and everything like that. But underneath, it had all the the ambiance of high school football stands. There's nothing there. Maybe one souvenir stand and one concession stand. Now there's a gold glove lounge in left field. There's a speakeasy in right field. And the way Janet Marie Smith, our vice president of stadium development, has gone all throughout the stadium, you know, not only with the checkbook, but, but the pixie dust, and to put it together in such a classy way, that's the amazing thing. Whether it's the directional signs, whether it's an exhibit, whether it's special food stands, whether it's the statues, it, it, she doesn't like to have that white space go to waste. And, and that's the most important thing. But it, you just can't take that for granted because somebody like Janet Murray Smith, she's the one that built Camden Yards and said, you're gonna make that ballpark go around the warehouse in left field, not knock it down. She's the one that put the seats at, at the Green Monster at Fenway, made it so popular. What's the most popular, or one of the most popular places at the stadium right now? Home run seats, can we get the home run seats? And so that's, that's, that's the amazing thing as far as, it's, it's one thing to have the renovations, but the way she did it, the best compliment I heard last year, it feels like it's always been here. Uh, and for something yeah. that's only not even two years old, that's the greatest compliment I heard. Yeah, and it was perfectly executed. I mean, other stadiums can build new amenities, but you can't have that Southern California weather. You can't have that, that mid-century modern, iconic look that Dodger Stadium has. But yeah, I mean, just hearing you talk about the All-Star game has me even that much more hype. I can't wait for it. I mean, just having them showcase that game at Dodger Stadium and the potential of having Clayton Kershaw after, like you mentioned, we didn't know how his season was going to unfold this year. And the fact that he's even in the conversation to start, it's very exciting time here in Los Angeles. I hope I can go. I'm looking for five tickets for like $20. If anyone's out there, you know, hit me in the DMs. But no, it's going to be a great day at Dodger Stadium.